Welcome back, everybody, to the Birdies and Bourbon Show. Thanks for joining us today. Um, friend of the show, John Tattersall, is joining Dan and Cal today. We're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk a little uh, BMW PGA Championship. I can't wait to get into that one. We're going to chat about the Presidents Cup, the Players of the Year. We're going to get into a little bit of um, a little bit of player. Uh, some player coach changes, some player swing changes, and kind of go through that. But, um, John, thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on again. Absolutely. Hey, ab absolutely. I'm like, uh, I I'm wondering when we're start going to get when we're going to get invoices for this. That's <laughs> that's that's what I'm waiting on is one of the invoices showing up. So let's do a rev share. How about that? There you go. There I, you I go. love it. I love it. I think this is. Uh, I think this is a great direction for us. So uh, I'm sure John will plug himself and tell you all about him. Uh, he is a uh, golf instructor coach here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, you can find him at Tattersall Golf. You can find him at Fusion ATL. Um, I don't know where else can they find you, John. Anywhere Delta goes to is one of my standard lines. <laughs> anywhere Delta goes, yeah, I, I do uh, follow John on Twitter, and uh, he is uh, he's, he's he's jet setting these days. So yeah, um, always fun. Nice spots to go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we got to we got a lot to talk about. Uh, but before we do that, what's uh, what's new in John Tattersall's work? I uh, just been traveling a lot. I was actually in Scotland a couple of weeks ago with some friends slash clients, and um, the weather was better than here which isn't difficult at the moment um but it was honestly incredible uh it was clear blue skies hardly any wind um crazy times in uh crazy times in uh, that part of the world um because yeah. of, you know you had two years worth sorry if my video is going on off there Good. we had two years worth of um you know backup basically we, I, I tried to go last year you couldn't get back. You couldn't, you know, you had to test to come back to the States. So that really, mm. really quite a lot of people's trips. So basically you got two years of people trying to get to Scotland and they're condensing it into a year. So it was, it was tremendous. It was great. If people haven't done it yet, I definitely suggest you go. Um, and you won't get better weather than I had last time I was there. So I couldn't blame the weather. It was, uh, it was pretty amazing. Awesome. Yeah, so so you, I think you've shared with us. You played over there before. Um, probably you told us you were going the last time we talked. Again, it it, it, was, uh, it was something you had scheduled. Um, so in that, like, uh, what courses did you play? Uh, and and did you did you go for new courses or did you go for some that were kind of old favorites? A bit of both. Um, I played um, Glen Eagles Kings Course was one I haven't played before, which is where they just hold the uh, held the. British Senior Open, mm. uh, and then I, I played with uh, one of my friends, Wallace Booth, who played professionally for a number of years. He hits it ridiculously hard, so that was interesting and and um, demoralizing at the same time. <laughs> humbling, um, humbling is a is a good way to put that. It is, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then played St Andrews Old on the Monday, which was great. It's um, it's an acquired taste. I. I haven't acquired the taste for it yet, honestly, but it, <laughs> walking up the 18th hole, I birdied 16, uh, two putt par on 17, drove the 18th and three whacked it. So it was, I mean, that's not horrible. Come on. Three putt par on 18 is good. I mean, mm. I, mean I, I think, I think Dan could actually three putt every hole. Well, let me take that. I don't know if Dan could three putt every hole at the <laughs> old course. That's true. That's true. I, I haven't played it. I've I've seen plenty of it uh, virtually, and yeah. I I think Dan. If you told Dan today, you you I'll give you three putts on every hole, take it or leave it. I think Dan's taking it. Probably. I mean, there the greens are so big in the middle. The three putt would be good, actually. So it's once you start hitting those, you you could literally. You know, I don't know what the number would be, and nothing against Dan. Anybody, you could put the in <laughs> positions, and the greens are literally, I think they're 100 yard wide at places. You know, it's just crazy because you got double greens, obviously. Sure. Uh, and then the only protection um, is that you have to be able to lag putt very well. And they got these pins in funky places where they look reasonably easy on TV, but they're on these ledges where if you just miss it, it's, it's off and running. The only protection really is that the, because they have wind, you can't have the greens that fast. Right. They're probably, you know, a nine at most, 10 maybe. If they got up to the speeds we have in the U.S. and you got any wind at all, you literally couldn't finish. I mean, I think the... What, 
we saw it a few years ago, right? I mean, they had to, they had to, cause the, the, I mean, the ball just wouldn't sit still. So they had to pull them off the course. So, yeah. Yeah. So 2015, I think that was with, um, Everybody's friends, Brooks Kepka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, don't worry, you're not going to get out of here without chatting a little live golf. So, uh, <laughs> so, so we, we'll get we'll get there soon enough. All right. Um, so, uh, it, is there a favorite pub? Uh, we well, don't have to go through all the cities and all the courses, mm -hmm. but is there if if there was one that you're like, here's where you got to go and you got to make it a point? Uh, I mean, I, so the state at Russex, which is overlooking the 18th hole at St. Andrews. So not particularly a pub. There is a pub down below there. But I had breakfast on Monday morning, like having my sausage and um, uh, fried eggs and bacon uh, and looking at the 18th hole of St. Andrews, having a cup of tea was very okay. nice. Awesome. I, there you go. And then we were at uh, Turnberry, the latter part of the week. So having dinner there or just sitting out front, looking out over the golf course, looking at the uh, North Sea, that would be just phenomenal. Just, just, mm. um, um, I did have a drink there, but that's a good spot. You could have a drink there sitting there, but bring, yeah. bring some pounds with you because it's not cheap. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good yeah. That, that's bu bucket list for sure. I, I don't know. We'd talked about going a few years ago, same and same thing. It's like getting there, you know, it was going to be a challenge. So I don't know. It's probably a next year or year after thing for us. So we'll, yeah. uh, we'll make it and happen. Do like what I tell people to do is always have an East Coast location, a West Coast location. Don't overcommit to playing. Have a couple of destinations so you're not changing hotels all the time. It's not like traveling in the States where it's it's quaint uh, and it's it's not as not quite as easy. It's very, very good. The food's much, much better than it used to be. So all of the stuff you used to hear about, terrible food, blah, blah, blah. It's really, really good now. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Is, so is that, I mean, I, it, it's fun because of what it is, but for somebody that's, that's in golf, right? I mean, you're living it, breathing it. I mean, you, you can't mean shit. You're, you're coming on here and you could be doing something else. Right. Um, and, and you're talking about golf. I mean, is that, is that still a fun vacation for you? Like hands down, like it's, it's still there, there's the drive and I, I still want to go and do that just on my own. Yeah, I mean, I went with some friends who I do some work with as well. So it was a bit of a, like many of my relationships with clients, I've had been friends with them a long time now. So it's a bit blurred, if you will. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it was great fun. I mean, it's it just from a being in that part of the world, different vibe from a relaxed point of view. They think Americans are slightly crazy how much they work and all that. It's <laughs> probably accurate. Um, so, but it, it was just, it was just lovely and, and just kind of taking the time to slow down and go do that. And obviously I love golf. So it was great to, to go right. play uh, the idea of, of going sightseeing for a week uh, is not in my DNA. So, so, so you didn't, you didn't work in any beach times, what you're saying. Uh, I was close to the beach, but no beach. time. <laughs> Yeah, I hear, you. I hear you. Okay, so let's get into. Uh, we'll have some fun stuff at the end, but let's uh, let, let's kind of talk about current affairs and what's happening. And uh, we got a golf tournament coming up this week in uh, in in your old neck of the woods, right, or or close yeah. by. Close uh, by. Yeah, at, at, yeah at Wentworth Club. Um, it's the and I'm going to start with this. So, so everybody, you know, we've been hearing now rumblings for, I don't know, what are we, six or eight months in with, you know, live tour, PGA tour, you've got, you know, everybody at each other. I know who your employer is. So I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to skirt around some things uh, or you know, you, you'll, you'll redirect and not answer if, if needed. But, you know, the big struggle has been, um, Hey, if you go to live, you're not playing on the PGA tour. And yeah. as, as a, as a lay person, as I read that just the title that says BMW PGA championship, yeah. uh, obviously it's the European tour and it, but it's ho and hosted by the DP world tour. Yes. And I, and I'm looking through and there's a handful of names that are currently playing on the live tour that are, they've got tea times, um, at the BMW PGA championship. And as I'm as I'm looking at who's there and who's not there, as I see it, it looks like the folks that um, what did they do? They that resigned their PGA Tour card. They're yeah. not there. The folks that said I'm holding on to it, uh, they are showing up, right? The Garcias, the Patrick Reeds. I don't think he did, unless I'm misreading something. But that's my interpretation of who's playing and who's not from from that, you know, good and bad. 
Yeah, I think the cynical view could be a lot of players are over there because it, it could be world ranking points. So that's the big sticking point now between what Liv has and what Liv hopes to be. If they get world ranking points uh, and they get it figured out with the majors, then I think you're going to see a few more people jumping around. I think the leverage points right now are world ranking points and what's happening in the majors. So players that are like a Dustin Johnson, for instance, won the Masters two years ago, I think. Yeah. So he had five year yeah. exam. Oh, see. Basically. Yeah. Uh, but these guys that, are, that were, uh, you know, hadn't won a major. And, um, and if, you know, you, they had, they had um, qualifications on the PGA Tour. But if you, if you resigned from that, you're a little bit in no man's land. But the, from what I understand, the, the group that owns Liv also bought into the Australasian Tour. So the, you're going to see a lot of guys showing up in tournaments. You wouldn't know, normally see them in uh, just to try and keep their world ranking points because that's the big, oh, that's a great unknown at the moment. Uh, the the PGA Championship over there and it's sponsored by BMW now. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been a great tournament for a long, long time. Went with an iconic golf course, redesigned a, a couple of times recently by Ernie Els, I think, did it. Um, and so it's just been a great championship for many, many years. Um, so I think there's a lot of players that would like to go play in it no matter what. And now they may say, hey, I'm now, I now can go play over there. You used to have to get, if you're a PGA Tour member, you had to request permission to play in an event outside of the PGA Tour unless it was just not opposing anything, which was difficult to do. So I think a lot of players have probably wanted to play it in the past and, and now have a chance to. Uh, Patrick Reed has played in it before. I know that much. He's won in Europe multiple times, even before Liv he was going to play in European tour events. And I'm, I'm not a Reed fan by any stretch of imagination, but he, he went and played in events he didn't have to uh, for quite a while. Um, and then I was listening to something with John Ram Rick today where he was talking about, look, the Garcias, the Westwoods, the Royal, the Polters, they've supported that tour for a long, long time. So it would be really kind of ballsy for a guy who's in his early 20s to say they can't come play over there. So it, I think there's a lot of, different dynamics going on within that at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, I know marshall has been quite outspoken about it. Um, he's a defending champion. He's got every right to say what he wants, but uh, I can kind of, I can kind of see the leverage that is there and isn't there with the PGA over there with the DP world tour now. So there is, there is in theory, no European tour. It's now the DP world tour. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah totally agree. And, and I are you surprised in I, I don't know, Billy Horschel personally. Um, I know, you know, you hear what you hear about individuals right out there and, and it, you know, take it with, for what it is. A lot of it comes from the media and who knows how, how true or, you know, what what's uh, what label they're going to stick on people. Are you surprised that Billy Horschel has taken such a uh, such a firm stance in kind of defending the PGA tour. I mean, you know, it's, you know, Ryder cups, all that. I mean, I think that, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't deny the fact that, you know, he's, he's American tried and true. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I just didn't, I wouldn't have said, Hey, that's going to be the guy that's going to, you know, kind of be a martyr out there. So. No, he, he lives in Ponte Vedra. Uh, he's probably got a ton of friends that, are, that work for the PGA Tour. Um, he's been that staunch supporter of the PGA Tour for a long time in many different capacities. So it's probably a little closer to home for him, um, given that he's, you know, he's right there in Ponte Vedra. So all the, imagine the rumor mill, you're on tour playing golf, and then you get <laughs> stuck right in the middle of the rumor mill. So I'm sure that yeah, he's probably fairly sick and tired of answering questions on it at this point. And, right. and most, you know, he's probably not, you know, he's confident enough in his own abilities. He's not going to try and, you know, say, Hey, I'm just going to give a political answer. He's telling people what he thinks. Now, hopefully some resolution comes along and they all kiss and make up at some point. I think the players, there's always bits of, you know, riffs and, and, and clicks out there anyway. So it's not like they're all, buddy buddy to begin with uh they're right. highly competitive individuals so it's not totally surprising and given where he lives and what what he what he goes home to each week it's it, i'm not not totally shocked yeah oh. it, i mean it, it, the other side is it's it's a job right so i mean just think about you know it's because most of us when we go to play golf we, we're so we get to select who we go play golf with right we're going with our buddies and it's it's fun <laughs> and it's you know it be it on a trip or a uh, Saturday hit and giggle, whatever we're at. 
And I guess it's always hit and giggle for us, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's, um, you know, they're showing up to the office every day and it's, you know, think about when you show up to the office, I mean, there's people you kind of gravitate towards your point, right? I mean, there's uh, you know folks that, that organically are going to, uh, they're going to gravitate towards each other and they're, they're just going to have be like-minded and then you've got folks that, Hey, we're, yeah, we're, we're going to work together, but you know, we don't need to go have dinner afterwards. So. Yeah, I mean, just imagine like if you're, say, you work for somebody like Apple and Apple's the big 800 pound pillar in that world. And all of a sudden something comes along that's trying to beat Apple. Well, your your whole world revolves around how Apple stock's doing, how Apple's doing, how the vibe is at the office. And sure. so you be defensive to the company that's trying to support you and your family. So it, it's it's personal to a lot of these guys. And um, unfortunately, the the rhetoric sometimes gets ramped up in all directions that the, you know, karma heads don't prevail, but um, I can understand. I can't understand quite how we are, where we are. I can understand some people feeling that way and I hope to find a resolution. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, I think that it's, uh, I think there is a space in an area where they coexist uh, and, and, you know, a partnership might be a little, to uh might not be the right word to use but but definitely there there could be some cohesion there where uh you know there, there's probably enough uh market space for everybody right it, and and that may take some other people getting out of the way that are making decisions right so you can oh, get past possibly. some egos so yeah possibly i think i think like i said the big thing is the official goal, golf world ranking points yeah. how they're appointed and then there is some um, you know, like the Hero World Challenge is, is an 18 or it's an 18 man tournament with no cut, and that gets world ranking points. So, there is no mm. absolute formula for this. Right. So, if somehow they, they say that these live events are not going to get world ranking points, that's a big deal. And then, if the, the, the Open and the US Open, they're open, so in theory they can play. If the Masters come out and say, We're not taking these guys, again, that could be a that could be a, a decision point for a lot of people. So, so I'm not going to ask you about that, but I'm going to ask the question in a different way. If, and I think I know, I know what my opinion is, but if the master says yes, everybody mm. else says yes. Right. Mm. For, from a, from a major standpoint. So the, the joke, if you will, with the masters, it's an invitational tournament, meaning right. you could be the defending champion. And if you do something, then we're not going to. So, right. um, PGA is derived from world ranking points, other qualifications, the opens, you could qualify no matter what, really. Um, and so like the USGA, I thought, answered the question really well when we were at Brookline on like how far back would they have to go to say that people can't qualify? I mean, that's that's a really, really tough. Wow. I don't think anybody wants any piece of that in a court of law. Um, so I think they they had a very good scenario the masters can also do what the heck they want i mean it's an invitational um i guarantee you if they disinvited some people other people would show up <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. they would nobody would vote with their feet and say i'm so offended i'm not going to play right yeah. right yeah exactly. or, or the next time they invited them back they would show up right so uh <laughs> yeah the face is pressed at the at the <laughs> hey john real quick um since we're on kind of the competition of live and we were going to talk about the bmw but cal got mm -hmm. derailed into something yeah. else but since like, we're on that let's talk a little bit about the T pga tour changes and i was watching bill ackman this morning on cnbc and he was he's doing something unique with tennis and mm -hmm. trying to help fund some tennis um players to be able to help them compete more at the younger age or whatever it is, something along those lines. Yeah. Um, and then the PGA tour made some changes recently as well with regards to cuts, you know, you get $5,000 if even if you don't make the cut and then you get the stipend up front for the rookies and everything else. So how's that, how's that going to affect, you know, the PGA tour competition? You, you coach a lot of these types of players, you know, mm -hmm. do you think, is this, has this been a struggle for them in the past? Is it a really good thing? Oh, it's it's um, it's a massive thing. The PGA Tour, in many ways, has been very top heavy, which has been, you know, how do you make people more competitive? You make them strive for something. I think the reality is now through the success of college programs and coaches around the world, there are more and more good players than there ever have been. So now you have a real problem where players are really, really good and not able to get into situations to show off their skills and um, and be able to survive long enough to be able to hang in there to show off their skills. It's it's an expensive endeavor trying to play on tour. Um, if you 
don't get your card in the corn ferry, you're probably breaking even at best, if not losing money. So you could generate well over hundred thousand dollars a year and be underwater basically. And that's living any kind of flash lifestyle. That's just purely caddy fees, travel, you know, on the, on the corn ferry, there's no rental car. There's no courtesy car. So Mm -hmm. get on the PJ tour, you you land at the airport, there's a car service there waiting for you. Corn ferry, you're on your own. You're getting your own car. You know, you got to, you know, most of them, some of the agents will book hotels for them, but you're, you're really trying to save as much as you can. Um, So anything that helps the groups further down, I'm all for. I don't want it to be completely where it's just, they just show up and don't have to work very hard. I mean, they're, they're, but you, you want to see kids that, that don't have the financial wherewithal to be able to make it. That would be my concern. A few of the kids that I coach, the kids, they're not kids anymore, but Q school is entry fee is six grand this year. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. So, you know, you go through first stage of Q school, you miss that six grand guy. So no, you're not getting it back. Yeah. Not getting it back. And so like, so, you know, they're giving more and more money to the guys that have money, which is the way it is out there. But $6,000 is a bit obnoxious, really, because that's just entry fee. That's not, hey, I've got, now you've got a hotel and a caddy. You're in for at least 10, probably. Right. For that. So, it, well, and, you, and you're probably bringing somebody else along with you, right? I mean, it's not, or, yeah, yeah, ideally, it's not just you, right? So, family member, then you're, but you're paying a caddy. So it's three stages. So you've got yeah. first, you're paying six grand, hotel, travel. Second stage hotel travel, third stage hotel travel. So you know, yeah. so and if, if they reduce that, I mean, they would get probably. They're not trying to make money from that. I understand, but they could subsidize that more than they do. And then one of the players I used to coach told me, so I'm, I'm getting this second hand. But he was on the advisory panel for the Corn Ferry. They subsidize the Champions Tour more than they subsidize the Corn Ferry. Wow. So you. Wow made it to the champions tour because of earnings wins those are two main categories to get on there They're, that tour has been subsidized more than the corn ferry tour which to me because i'm biased towards the guys i'm trying to help that that seemed a bit unfair too it, i mean it it makes sense from a like if you just from a straight business standpoint i can understand because people are showing up at the champions tour to see you know daily and who used to be phil and Jimenez and you know we, you can run through the names that you've watched all the way through so there's a little bit of to your point like it's a little top heavy uh it's it you got a lot of star power there and yes. and it, and and that comes with tv time which then turns into money it, so, but I think that that's probably relative to today in the Corn Ferry Tour. In that, who I don't know, Lingworth, right? That, that may be the most, uh, the, the biggest name that just got his card back, uh, yeah. you know, that qualified at the Corn Ferry. But, um, you know, I, I can kind of see where it's like, well, what are we subsidizing them with? Now, the PGA Tour all of a sudden found a whole lot of money to start <laughs> spreading around to a lot of PGA Tour players. So yeah. it's kind of like, you know, where where are you going to start moving that stuff around to? Which I, I think we'll see. So it's, you know, is competition a good thing? I think almost in every sense it is, um, as long as people are playing fair if if that's you know if we if we want to call it that but yeah i i think it's i, I think we're going to start to see more and more because think about how hard it is to watch a corn fairy tour event you, you can't really yeah yeah i mean from actually being able to see it or just watch it i'm saying if you want to watch it on tv oh yeah no it's so the golf channel do a great job of covering it um and i think on that tour you kind of have to have some reason to watch it a little bit. The players are phenomenal, but there's not quite that. Like you said, with the Champions Tour, they're going to see legends of the game. Right. So the golf fan uh, wants to see Freddie play, for instance, or wants to see, you, know, you name a name. The story for me as a coach was always like the guys that um, struggled for all those years then got out there. And then that's a good story too, which I think yep. personally there could be more of that where it's, you know, there are a lot of guys on the Champions Tour that, that hang on, hang on, hang on. They'd be great if the more of the younger guys came in, whether that's increased the field size. I'm not sure what the answer is. But those stories, to me, were always fascinating, too, because that truly is a mulligan on life. They've not done that great. They've kept playing, and now they're actually out there making money. Absolutely. So those are pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, Dan, do you, anything else here? Because I think I want to send us over to uh, talk about the President's Cup a little bit. Well, I think we want to talk, field. while we're on the PGA Tour changes, the other thing we wanted to talk about, John, is that apparently they're doing the 20 events. They want them to be kind of these elevated events, but the top talent being there. And to Cal's point earlier, was talking about how it's going to be a condensed season. So it's going to be more of an off season, more condensed events all kind of together. Uh, how does this change the mindset of these people going in, these players going into the season? From a training um, perspective. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem with golf to this point or the last few years has been no off season for these guys. So that, that, is, that is one of the big issues. And then if you, with the fall season, the way it was, that wraparound season, the theory was initially the bigger names would take off in the fall, give some of these other guys a chance to play in these events. And, but then what happened was a lot of these guys came back to playing. Now all of a sudden they had a bit of a rough stretch getting going. Not the superstars, but like the guys could kind of just above that level. Now all of a sudden they're really behind. And now you get like major stress. How do I get my keep my playing privileges? So I think that was a theory to begin with. Now it's been like everybody's just basically out there playing right the way through. So unintended consequences, I would say, the fall season became – Rather than just a you know throw away, it became like we better get on this. So even at the highest level, guys generally make their money in a fairly short span of time, like eight six to eight weeks. They're usually banking all their cash. The problem is you don't know when that's coming. So they had to be ready all year long, and and so now they you know now they'll hopefully have an off season where they can actually take care of their health, work on some technical stuff, get ready and go again with it being such a top heavy scenario. Like, I don't know if they're talking about the top 60 or whatever the scenario was of these invitations. If you're not in that top 60 or you're a phenomenal player, but you quote unquote, a marginal one on that list, talk about stress level going up. Cause now it's like you make this or you make that. Um, so it's, it's really, it's going to be very interesting. I mean, if I'm Rory McIlroy, I'm, at this point, he probably doesn't care. He just made another $20 million last week. But, <laughs> but that kind of player where people want to see people like Rory play, awesome, no problem. But there are so many great, great players that maybe don't have the panache on TV or their, you know, whatever, personality-wise, whatever, that, that are really going to be kind of squeezed. But they're, it's first-world problems, honestly. You know, so Yeah. But do you, think, you, think that, you think the offseason is a good thing for, for the top talent? Oh, 100%. Now, what if you want to be cynical, guess what's going to start happening? Oh, you know, we're just going to get paid a bunch of money to go play in Australia or China again, and this is an off-season event, you know, guaranteed money, that kind of thing. But I'm not that cynical, obviously. But that's yeah, but, but to your point, I mean, you've got McElroy, Rom, Fitzpatrick, uh, you know, that, that are showing up and at the BMW PGA. Now, they would have probably shown up at that regardless right i mean that's that's something that's probably going to be on the schedule they're going to play uh just just you know because they they are and and that's something they're probably going to continue to do but i mean i guess that to your point i mean that's something not to lose sight of and i I don't i wouldn't look at it as cynical necessarily as much so as well what were they going to play anyway right and and yeah so they're not like an off week for them is not going to do brain surgery they're playing somewhere yeah so if i'm going to the BMW PGA is a flagship event for the DP World Tour. So anybody that supported that tour or been on that tour, that would be one of the events you, you put in your calendar every year to kind of when is that happening, how does that work in. And the different tours are talking to each other. So the PGA Tour definitely, you know, has now they have a, an official, they bought part of the DP World Tour, but they're always trying to coordinate. The, the, the thing that happened years ago was that the, the PGA Tour – definitely were bullying too strong a word but they they're heavily weighting points to their events and they're they're getting more um if you want to stay in the top 50 you want to play in the events where the more official world golf ranking points given out so some of these tours are really struggle because you want to go play in your home tour but if if there, it's not getting many points you're now caught in that revolving door of having to go play where you need to play sure. category, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. So Dan, uh, he said, I hijacked this thing earlier. Now, now he's done it. I, I was, I was going to go somewhere completely different, but he's, he's got us here. <laughs> I know. And, and th- this is going to lead us into, I, so I, I want to talk of, I want to stick on the schedule a little bit. 
Mm-hmm. So, so the three, and this will give you something to doodle on why, while I throw these out. So the, the three nominations for player of the year, Scotty yeah. Scheffler, yeah. He, played, he played 25 total events this season. Yeah. Rory McIlroy played 16 total events this season. And mm-hmm. Cameron Smith, who is no longer on the PGA Tour, mm-hmm. uh, he played 18 total events. So two of the guys that qualify or that were nominated for player of the year, they uh, they didn't meet the minimum of what they're going to meet next year. And and I say yeah. that because, you know, you got one of the guys, I mean, no, no one there is, every everybody I just named off are many, many, many years younger than all three of us. Correct. And however, one of the guys is, is a bit older than the other two. And I, I guess, you know, and I don't think any of those, uh, any of the three guys have really been injury ridden, but if you look at someone um, like a, you know, maybe a Will Zalatoris, that's already experiencing a, a lot of challenges in, you know, at, at a very young age in his professional career, I guess, what does that condensed season do? And to your point earlier, there's already events that they're going to be playing outside of, you know, that, that they're just going to be staples, right? I mean, the Scottish Open, the thing. Oh, so, so where's the sacrifice come in there? And then what's the, what's that look like for the player? I guess the thing would be like the Scottish Open, for instance, uh, is now considered a PGA Tour co-sanctioned event. So if you if you did that to play play the week before to go play the E Open, the British Open, then that's two co-sanctioned yeah. events. Um, so you got the four majors, you got that one. Um, so you're already at five, and then you got fifteen others in the U.S. basically, or fifteen other non-major events. Um, so they they just have to. They, they know very well. It's a bit like baseball with the pitch count on a pitcher. They know what their rhythm is at this point to play well. Are they, are they playing two weeks before a major, one week before a major, or doing what Tiger used to, which he's the GOAT, so you can't count him. He wouldn't play for a major. Right. And still, uh, most guys are going to play the week before a major, if not two weeks before a major. So... They'll find out, like they, most guys can do a three-week stint and then be off and play pretty well. Any more than three weeks, most, most of them are like, uh, I'm burnt out. Particularly if you're, a, if you're a McElroy, a Scheffler, or a Cam Smith, it's not just the golf. It's all the other stuff. It's the media obligations. Um, a lot of times they'll work in corporate stuff, dinners cocktail parties around these events so they're at an event they don't have to go do a separate day somewhere so there's it's a busy time if you're a player at that level it's a it's a darn busy schedule you're doing meet and greets of some type somewhere doing media so it's it's not just the golf that wears them out it's all the other stuff as well yeah yeah no no it makes total sense so let's stick on that for just a second and and get into um uh, the Zalatoris piece since, mm. since we're here and talking about what that looks like, because I mean, mm. he's had to withdraw some from some pretty big events this year, right? What did he p- came out of the open? Uh, didn't make it to Eastlake. Uh, so, I mean, w- what's, what's, what's in store? What's, what's Willie Z doing? And I got, got his first win on tour this year. So. Yeah. Uh, and then, so he won at Memphis, didn't he? Played at the MW, yep. pulled yep. out of W, missed Eastlake. And now, you know, missing. So East Lake was two weeks ago, and he's missing. Already right. said he's missed the, the President's Cup. Yeah. So a herniated disc is obviously a big deal. How bad it is, I have absolutely no idea. I know a number of people online were saying, well, he's, clearly you could tell he's going to hurt in his disc because of the way he swings a golf club, which is absolute hmm. bravo Sierra, as the pilots say. Um, <laughs> so, you know, some, who knows how long the injury was there. Who knows how long they've been working on things. Generally, the, the physios have a pretty good handle of what's going on, and they're doing as much preventative stuff as possible. Uh, but the reality is traveling, he's a tall kid, playing golf a lot. It, it wears on your body, and they're not just swinging at 80% anymore. They're giving it a rip. So something generally has to give. Hopefully, they can just get it calmed down and get, it, get, it, uh, get the jelly back in the disc where it needs to be. Sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. So that, that brings us. Oh, just to, to stay there, just mm-hmm. most people, the lower back, ideally. So I, I think it's like an L5, S1, L4, L5, lumbar spine issue. 
uh, we're not actually asking that part of the back to rotate that much. It's, it's a hip scenario we're asking to do most of the work. So each hip has to rotate a certain amount. And the lumbar spine is not designed to rotate much. I honestly don't know where it's herniated, but most guys, when they herniate, is usually in the lumbar spine. So there could have been some other injury that we didn't know about that then popped up in this place. It's usually like a think of a host pipe. It's going to burst where the weakest point is, basically. Yeah. But that's not the issue. Yeah, well, a, a lot of the what I saw was it was the a, a lot of folks were talking about the S curve, right? So it was and, and, and I saw a lot about the setup. Right. And it was and, and you kind of, you know, again, his uh, his physique. Right. If you looked at him from from a side angle, his, yeah. you know, from the pelvis to the neck. Right. There was an S there. And that was that kind of, you know, it's like ringing out a dish towel. Right. As he's as he's kind of, make you know, making the swing and uh, mm -hmm. obviously a powerful guy. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah I, I don't, I don't People, unfortunately, on, on social media saying he's obviously in an S curve, et cetera. Well, that's not necessarily the case. He's a, a very thin kid. He has glutes. So generally speaking, when you see an athlete with an ass, the, the butt can stick out. So it's like a bubble. So you're, you're assuming the bubble is where his spine is. That doesn't necessarily follow. So Interesting. There, were, there were people in my world that were saying, clearly, look at his setup. It's like, no, he's, he's, I think his waist is at the most 30. So he's got no body. You see his body motion. And if he has a butt, then it's going to make his backside look like it sticks out. His spine could actually be pretty neutral at that point. So when we're when we're looking at ESCO, we're looking predominantly at the lower third of the back. That, that's you, interesting because a lot of the folks that you know, when uh, to your point, a lot of the people were showing kind of side by side comparisons, and yeah. you know, but, but they're comparing it to you know, like a uh, you know, a forty plus year old Tiger Woods that doesn't look anything like the nineteen year old Tiger Woods that you know. It's, so yeah, that, that's that, I didn't think about that. That's a really good. Uh, Unless some MRI in their in their eyes don't don't make those assumptions. That's why we're always saying look test. Like I said, it, it was. I think it's a lumbar issue. I'm not one hundred percent sure, but but the PTs that we work with when when we have a lumbar issue, they're checking their hips, they're checking their knees, they're checking their ankles. It showed up in the lumbar spine because it was an issue somewhere else. It was not typically because it's a lumbar issue. That just happened to be where it, it said, I've had enough. You need to slow down and listen to me because we've got to re rectify this. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Dan, have you got anything else on this? Because I wanted to go to the President's Cup, but now I don't. Now, we, I mean, he's... he's, well, we he's got, well, we can get to the President's Cup last. How about that? Because right. it's, it's kind of come up in a couple of weeks. So there's a couple more things I think we wanted to touch on here. One was the, the Ricky Fowler just split with his coach. And then we yeah. want to talk a little bit about Rory and yeah. him being the face of the PGA Tour. How how difficult is that to keep up and play competitive? Because it's taken a lot of his time. We kind of talked about that. But putting those two together, right? So Ricky historically has had tons of endorsements, and he said that you know that he was he was he had a great team of everything he was doing, and this obviously it taken a toll on his game. How how much can Rory keep this up, or is it going to get to his game as well? It seems like it's elevated his game, but can that last? Yeah, I think he's he's clearly fired up about all these things that are going. <laughs> Certainly, kind of put the PGA Tour. I don't want to because he said you know the alpha male in the room is Tiger, so he's not saying he's the man in that respect. But he's certainly been the one that's been like, "Hey guys, we need to kind of you know get this together." And he's enough of a um, a great enough player, but he's also I think some of it honestly is where he comes from and that mindset of a bit more of the soccer stuff and the team and them versus us kind of thing. I think, I think he really feels like, okay, this is kind of personal and he's not afraid to kind of share his opinion. He's eloquent, smart kid. So he's like, okay, somebody has got to step up and say something here. He's also been privy to a lot of stuff because he's on the players advisory council. So he's known what's coming prior to all of this that's come out, you know? So, He's probably been given good information from the PGA Tour and then kind of, hey, you're a big enough name. Will you go talk about this? And, and then he's not shy. Like, he'll, he'll tell you what he thinks. I mean, a lot of the media guys will say he is a great interview because he will say what he thinks. And, and that's awesome because, you know, most of the media people, where I come from in England, they build you up to then cut you down. <laughs> uh, that's kind of the mindset. Um, but so he's, he's, you know, said what he wanted to say. and. Um, I was actually at the BMW Championship in the hotel when they had that that meeting. Um, wow! 
So the Monday night, I was one of my friends is Jordan Spees agent. I was talking to him, and Rory came over and said something to him. And then he looked at me like, "Who the hell are you? Like, what? Are you, <laughs> how are you privy to this conversation?" And I was like, "I gave him a look like, dude, I'm not saying." <laughs> um, uh, so there was a lot of like he was rallying the troops for sure uh, up there, and, and he's one of the few people I think that a cares enough and willing to stand out there and put his chin out there and say something. A lot of people will grumble and, and be like bemoan things, but very few are going to stand up and say, "Hey, we need to do something about this." Hmm. Hit all the points there, Cal. Anything else you want to touch on with Rory? Uh, I think I'm good on the Rory piece. I, w- I want to bring it back to uh, the Fowler piece that you mentioned earlier, and I'm going to tie this into kind of a Willie Z and a Fowler, and it's going to be uh, this is a coaching question, right? So if you're mm-hmm. if you're looking to uh, and you can think about this as you talk about the the next part that I'm going to ask you. So, and and where I'm going is, so you've got Ricky Fowler who just announced that he separated with uh, with John Tillery. Mm-hmm. Um, so, longtime swing coach, uh, been working on a lot of stuff over the past what two to three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. it's it's um, I would say progress hasn't necessarily been uh, well. I I shouldn't say that. It, it's. His, uh, if you just look at the numbers from a ranking standpoint, Ricky Fowler is definitely it. It hasn't moved forward. Right. Now, I, I get that there's a lot of things that that go on with swing changes and and such. I mean, look at Jordan Spieth, which I was watching that guy at East Lake, and holy shit, how how crazy is this thing that he's doing? <laughs> you know, all, all around here. But but he started the year at 14th. He finished the year at 13th. So something there's kind of working. So in, and where I'm, I'll get to the point is, so you got Willie Z who's got some injuries. Yeah. You're dealing with an injury. You got, you got Fowler who is, it looks like he's still kind of hung up in his, uh, in his changes. And then you've got Jordan speed. I know I threw another one in there on you that it kind of looks like he's like, if Spieth, if his, if he's putting, he's kind of got things back to, I don't want to say Jordan Spieth of old, but it's like, eh, okay, I can, uh, I, I can, I can put a little something down on this guy because there's a chance he's going to win. So if you're, if you're going to coach one of those. Yes. And, and, and not, not those individuals, but they're bringing three different aspects of, of uh, needs, wants, uh, have tos. Mm-hmm. Where, where are you gravitating towards? Um, I mean, Jordan's an interesting one because years ago, I think we talked about it before, we could never figure out how he was making the scores he was making. Right. He distance a little bit, which he needed to do. The driver was a bit of a liability for him. And, um, and then like a lot of things, then he started to, he worked more on, on improving the swing and lost some of the putting stuff. So it's kind of a, you're always trying to keep the plate spinning. Um, I would have high anxiety if I was if I was uh, Cameron McCormick coaching him, looking at that golf swing, thinking there's any chance this is going to hit a freaking fairway anytime soon. So, <laughs> just speaks to the mental fortitude of Jordan and the trust he and Cam have. They, they, he's been his coach since he was basically nine, I think. So they have tons of history, tons of. This is not the first issue. It's the first issue we've seen, if you will, mm. but it's not been a smooth. You know, you hear about all the wins and the junior, USGA junior. Right. That's been a pretty rocky road, not in a relationship point of view, but trying to get him better along the way. Now it's just in a public forum where you just can't escape. But their relationship is good enough that Jordan's not going anywhere unless something really weird happens. Uh, but his mental fortitude to do what he's doing, he knows everybody's talking about him and then to hit the shot to hit. I just, that's that's a that's a quality that, we haven't really found a good way to measure and quantify yet. You know, you, people could say, well, it's mentally tough. Well, what the hell, you know, what does that mean? That doesn't help me. Um, but all the others, we're pretty good about testing now. So Fowler, we can see what his stats were, what his ranking was, what his stats are now, and where is he? So there's a clear technical difference. He's also gotten married. I think his wife may be pregnant or they've had a child. Those are life events that, mm. that are difficult to overcome as a coach. Um, I know John Tillery pretty well. I know he's a great coach. He's worked with a number of other winners this year. So it's, it's difficult as a coach because you, you want the player to get better. You, you can tell the players what you think you need to tell them. If the player listens or not, you can't do anything about that. Right. So 
Sometimes you think you're communicating. What's the line? I think we're dealing with a failure to communicate, whatever that movie was that from. <laughs> you think you're communicating. Cool hand, Luke. There you go. Exactly. That's it. Um, and they're, 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 you know, it's just not penetrating or, or you, you know, their, their idea of what they think they should do and what you're telling them is not matching up. And the, the more poor play you have, the more that stress rises. And someone like Ricky, again, he's a popular player, popular on a number of fronts. He, he can't hide. He can't go play, play that crap, try and figure something out. Now everybody on TV is saying, what's wrong with Ricky? And look how good he was driving it before. He didn't really make a coach change before. Butch just said, I'm retiring. So I don't think right. Ricky was like ready for that. I think Ricky was like, hey, Butch, you know, but so, and I don't know how much help Ricky needed. If Ricky went to see Butch every quarter, would that have been enough? I have no idea. Um, yeah. Or did he need somebody out there helping him all the time? But unfortunately for John, it was a, it's a great player to coach, very visible. As coaches, you want to try and see how good you are. And it just hasn't gone well. But if you're going to do what we do, sometimes that's what happens. And you just got to, I guarantee you, John's lost sleep over it. I mean, no, no coach is in a position where they like so brazen. They're like, that's his freaking fault. I told him what to do. You, you know, you're, you really give a shit and it, and it hurts. It really hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, there, there's another coach out there. I don't know if he's available or not, but it has the same initials. So you could, uh, you, you could start with John or JT and it could, you know, you, you won't screw anything up and hurt anybody's feelings. So no, they, I'm all for it. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Absolutely. But, they're honestly like sheep. They have friends they're talking to. Yeah. So, look, you know, Tillery could be out there doing a great job. He's playing. Ricky plays with the same group every Tuesday. And these guys are not all blessed with smart, so it's like I don't know, dude. But like two years ago, you hit me better. Well, okay, <laughs> you know. And so they're they're all chasing what when somebody plays well, they're all looking at it, they see it, they know what's going on, they have eyes everywhere, and they're they're slightly paranoid, you know, just because they're they're trying to stay at the top of their game. So um, as much as you'd like to think that they're blinkered listening to you, uh, that's not the case. Yeah. Hey, I got one question, Cal, and I can give it to you for all the presidents, Kevin. I got a, this is questions for you, Cal. This is really just for you. Okay. So we talked about Billy Horschel earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, John, Billy Horschel drives Cal crazy when he watches him on television. Okay. With, with, with the feet and everything, how he's lining up the putts and line, every shot. It's like he's, like, like he's an NFL kicker, you know, trying to figure out how he's going to do his stance. What's going okay. on there? What's going on there? <laughs> he's he's a twitchy guy, you know. It's like, <laughs> stress, what... Uh... You got to kind of get comfortable, and he's a—he strikes me as a very Type A kind of guy, and hard to kind of like just get comfortable. They and and like I, I've told this to a few people, when you think these guys look calm on TV, they're not. They're not calm. He just kind of wears that a bit more on his sleeve with how he's doing, and uh, and you know he's fidgety, and and he I I, I know Fooch who caddies for him now. I don't know how much he yells at Fooch and. If you're if you're a caddy or a coach, you kind of expect that. That comes with the territory sometimes. So, um, I think he's just fairly high strung, kind of high achiever kind of guy. If you look at his body, he's pretty darn skinny. Yeah. So skinny people are usually moving around a lot, and you know, <laughs> him, him trying to sit still is not going to happen anytime. And when the pandemic started, he was one of those guys posting how he's doing peloton every day. Like I think he's just that. Right. That's just him, you know, and, and for him to become sort of an Ernie Els, probably wouldn't have heard of him. He needs to be a Billy Horschel. Yeah, you, you put uh, you put Nick Watney and Billy Horschel and you pair them together. And I'm like, uh, I, I can't even like I, I'm going to have to put blinders on man. It, it's yeah. uh, it, as bad as my golf swing is. I still think that could even screw it. And even though their golf swing is good. I'm just saying everything to get to the golf swing, you know, messes up. All right. So I know we got to get you out of here. So I'm going to I'm going to shortchange the president's cup, John. I yeah. actually I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to shortchange it. On a little long, you're good. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, uh, you probably expected it. That's why you said uh, we only got 40 minutes. I know we're definitely <laughs> yeah. over 40 minutes. Okay. So President's Cup. Uh, mm -hmm. This is, uh, I know Ryder Cup's probably uh, uh, nearer and dearer to your heart, get, give, <laughs> given given the Euros versus U.S. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're now talking President's Cup. We've got internationals versus U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're Trevor Immelman, you actually, you actually had an extra year to prepare 
Yeah. Right. A year, year and a half. You, you had, you had, you had, a, you had a lot of time to prepare for this thing. A lot of extra time to prepare for this thing. And now all of a sudden, uh, you know, you, you get shark attacked and I don't, you know, you lose the number two player in the world. I mean, the good news is there were some good players that got, uh, you know, that aren't going to be playing from the U.S. side. But when you start backfilling people and you start looking at the release that came out uh, on, uh, I think I can say, uh, I'll say on September the 6th, mm -hmm. uh, you've got Immelman's picks and yeah. he's got he's got a lot of new fresh faces on the board. Uh, okay. I think I think there are plenty of um, plenty of I, I, just a quick rundown. I, uh, so you got Decky, M, Tom Kim, Corey Connors, Mito Adam, Pendrith, Munoz, Siwoo, Cam, Zayden Hoot, and Cage Lee. Yeah. It, are there? It, I mean, what do you if you're if you're picking that team if you're if you're the captain picking, mm -hmm. what, what what are you doing with that man? Because I mean, you lose the number two player in the world. Who's who is it? Who's still playing damn good? And it, yeah, you're not going to lose a number two player of the world. He was on a trajectory going sure, right, right. Um, yeah, it's a problem. That wasn't one that um, Trevor was probably looking for or expecting or welcomed. Um, I don't know him. I, I've met him. I've been on a panel with him. Um, anybody that competitive is probably going to try and twist it around to be a you know okay, guys. Nobody expects us to win. And, um, and not talking down to the players that are there, but clearly they're, you know, the world number two, is, you can't really replace him. So how do you get those guys fired up now to really kind of get in it together? It's like a bonding moment around the fact that this has happened to us. Uh, we didn't welcome it, but, but it's happened. So how do we then use as a rallying cry, basically? And the pressure's on the U.S. team to win because they win that thing every time. It's also at Quail Hollow, which is a regular PGA Tour event. Um, so, again, that's a bit more of an advantage to the U.S. team. But how do you then try to channel that to say, okay, guys, we've got to, we've got to you know, really – we've got nothing to lose. We can really play strategically. Um, they have to beat us. They're supposed to beat us. So how do you get in such a mindset that you make it as comfortable and relaxed as possible? For the rookies, that could go really well. Or they could absolutely just, you know, struggle. Um, and they're great players. If you've made that team, you're a phenomenal player. Team competition, you're, you're an individual and you're playing a team competition. So how much can you make the individual realize they have to go play their own ball, figure it out, do the best they can, and or, by the way, the scoring system as a team. It's very difficult, I think, to, mat to, to flip a switch and all of a sudden think you're a a soccer team or whatever kind of team you're still having right. to take care of what you need to do to play well and his job honestly i think is to just facilitate that the best they can what does each player need how can make it comfortable what are parents are going to make it comfortable who are your friends that you want to play with i'm sure the picks were somewhat based on performance but also who else within the team do you get along with like who can the the adam scotts of the world who can he put with someone that's going to kind of take him under their wing and, and make them play better. And that's a lot early on when the, when the Ryder Cup was very much an American-dominated event. That's what the Europeans did so well. They had Seve, who would just, like, cut himself before he wanted to lose to the, to the U.S. team. He would be kind of one of the team leaders that would pull these other people under their wing and tell them what they have to expect a little bit and what, what to prepare for. So you need those kind of – you got six guys who made it, I think – I think Connors has been on there before, hasn't he? Uh, yes. Decky has. I'm not sure who else has, but you, you want as much of that dynamic where it's like, okay, guys, this is what's going to be like. This is what to expect. These are the formats we're going to be dealing with. And then how do you get those leaders to try and make those other guys as comfortable as possible? Yeah, j just for point of reference, uh, they played 14 times. The U.S. has won 11. Mm -hmm. Inter internationals have won once and there was one tie so there you go they won i think i think it was the tie was in south south africa that was a legendary tie that went into the night and they the the theory was that the the, the presence cup would have stayed with the u.s team and they kept playing it was when nicholas and uh, player were the captains i believe and it was it was only against tiger in the dark in south africa 
Uh, Nicholas, yeah, Nicholas and player. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, it's how do you turn all those negatives into a positive? We've lost great players. We're on foreign turf, if you will. Um, a lot of the players that are on the team play the U.S. tour, but they're still feeling, you know, they're going to go into a cauldron, basically. How do you, how do you um, perform in that scenario? Yeah. One of the guys which played on two Ryder Cups, and he told me that he played against Mickelson uh, Sunday at uh, Oak Hill, I think it was. And he said that, you know, Mickelson hold this putt on one hole and it's like an amphitheater around the green. And Pear was like, I'm supposed to be playing the guy and the hair on the back of my arm stood up when he made this putt. It's like, what the hell? You know, how do I, <laughs> how do I contain myself against that? Which is, which is crazy, right? I mean, just with everything that we've gone through in the past, again, I, I don't know, eight, six, eight, ten months, you know, and, and if you look at the President's Cup, I mean, and you look at uh, you look at records, right? I mean, you got Phil with 12, Phil mm -hmm. with the most points, uh, Phil with the most force and points wins, Phil with the most points. I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of history there. That's why I think as the game of golf and the spirit of what's happening, I mean, it, it's going to, I think that we're, I think the synergies will get, uh, get, get realigned back, back in the direction uh, that, that they need to, I uh, need to get into for, for golf as a whole. So early lean, if you can give me one. You go on, you go on, you go on underdog or are you, uh, <laughs> for, those, for those of you that aren't watching on YouTube and you're just listening to the podcast, I guess, uh, you should go to, uh, birdies and bourbon on YouTube and you'll see the answer. So, yeah, I, I think <clears throat> given that it's a home match, um, given the strength of the team on the U S side and, and given the departures, the departures on the U S side. I think we knew about these. They, they probably knew about them on the Presidents Cup side, on the on the uh, whatever it's called international side. But international. Still, there are a little more fresh wounds to to deal with. Yeah, uh, and it and I mean this has actually gotten Billy Horschel uh, allegedly. It's gotten Billy Ho on the oh, Presidents Cup team. So yeah, yeah I mean I mean there's uh, you know a handful of folks oh. there that are probably gonna gonna work their way on. Like who wouldn't have been on? Um, Beath, he's ranked eighth in FedEx Cup, so potentially uh, more a cow will be there. Homa, Billy yeah. Horschel, Cam Young is yeah. potentially going to make it. So yeah, uh, it, yeah, it, so. yeah. So you got what did they lose? Uh, they lost Kepka, DeChambeau, and DJ. D those three anymore? Is that it? Uh, uh, I mean, I don't think Patrick Reed would have qualified. I don't think he would have been. Uh, it, I mean. It, it, he would ever make a team anymore is if he qualifies obviously he won't do that anymore but nobody was picking him i don't think he would yeah, yeah. table table for 11 and one other guy <laughs> <laughs> strong any, opinions strong opinions on the show just say any breakout stars on the international team uh john that we could see like you know scheffler went head-to-head -head with rom you know at the Ryder cup and really made a name for himself and had a kind of a killer season yeah i tell you sebastian munoz is really really good cam davis is really good I don't know much about uh, uh, Taylor Pendrith, obviously a great player. Mito Pinera was the one, I think, that played really well at the PGA. Yep. Uh, and, you know, Siwu Kim, Cage Lee, they're tremendous. Um, Hideki, um, I know where his game is at the moment. He's obviously a star. Corey um, Connors, really good one. Tom Tommy, Kim. Tom Kim just won the Wyndham, right? He did, yeah. 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 And then, but like, you know, Corey Connors, I think he could be one that would really be a great leader within the team obviously yeah. he's got a points really interesting the adam scott i mean yeah. he by his own admission i would say he's kind of at the tail end of his career he's playing phenomenally well he's not kind of a rah rah he's kind of a quietish kind of guy but how fired up will he get either in public or in the team room to really kind of you know build around him that will be if he has a good one i mean it'd be great for him to to play really really well i think and, and to, to hold on, hold on, to hold on. John, John, do not talk about how fired up that he can get in the team room. This is not good for Cal. Going two weeks, he's gonna be dreaming about this. Oh, they're it's gonna, gonna be back, fine. back it's gonna footage. Be fine. It's gonna be great. It's, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be perfectly <laughs> fine. And I mean, this was the first time Adam Scott made it to uh, East Lake in quite a. I don't, I don't know what the number yeah. of year was. Yeah. Four or five years. I, it, it's been a minute since he's been there. Yeah. And yeah, um, yeah I mean, play it. He, I mean, he didn't necessarily play that well at East Lake, but. Uh, you know, it's a limited field, you know, what have you. So, yeah, I could see Adam kind of stepping up and, and being on President's 
cups before. I mean, I, I could see that being a thing, but I'm going to, well, you guys go ahead and wrap up the president's cup and then I'm going to steer us into, I know you got to go, but mm. we just, we just mentioned Tom Kim and we just mentioned Cam Young. So I'm going there next. Got it. No, I'm excited to see it at, at uh, Quail, right? It's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be great. So of course we know they have changed it a little bit. Um, the thing you mentioned about Adam at Eastlake, I don't know. I think he just got in. So he's starting 10 shots behind the leader. Yeah. Uh, some discussions about the format down there. If you've really worked hard to get to Eastlake, you're 10 shots behind and you're kind of tired at the end of the season, you, you're going to try and play because they're competitive. But if he gets off to a slow start, he might just be like, okay, let's just. Yeah, make it, make it to the uh, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, which he, of course he's going to do. But like, let's just kind of. How much was he really kind of grinding, grinding at that point? Right. Knowing like starting an event, it's difficult because you have to have some reward for playing well all year. But starting an event 10 back of the player that's played great the whole year, you're making a lot of money. But how motivating is that? I, I wish I was in that position to answer it, honestly, but I can't imagine it's too motivating. I, I think the answer is I would uh, reflect back on a uh, friend of the show, Scott Stallings, and making a first appearance at Eastlake. Yeah. And guess guess what? You you just check uh, checkmarked all the majors next year. So here you go. You know, wherever you want to play, you're golden. Yep. Go, go yep. get it. So. Uh, all right, PGA Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year. Let, let's start with Rookie of the Year because we've talked about two of them, which is Cameron Young, that's probably going to make the President's Cup, and yeah. Tom Kim. I think he played 13 events, won one. He had uh, three top tens. It, yeah. Is is there any? Uh, my question is: Sahith Thagala is the other that is uh, nominated for Rookie of the Year. Is Zalatoris a rookie this year, technically? Or is no, he... no, 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 no. Mm-mm. No. Yeah. Um, so you got Thagala, Cam Young, and Kim, and they're nominated. And it's voted on by the players, right, as, as far as who's going to win this. So yeah. you, the only person that's won has been Tom Kim, who yeah. only played in, I think it was 13 events. Yeah. Um, and you've got, you got Thagala and Young that didn't play any, they didn't win anything, but you've got five top tens in Thagala. So that probably puts him out already. Because yeah. you've got Cam Young at seven, and one of those was, I believe, a second place at the at the Open. Yeah, Cam Young. Yeah. Where, where do you where are you going with that? If you're voting, Cam Young. Hmm. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, I, I was busy drinking over here, John. You know me. Uh, he had a phenomenal year. He he finished second in an Open. He was close to the. I think at the PGA, yep. he was close well. Um, Exciting player to watch. A um, little bit of bias. He's American. Most of the players on the US PGA Tour are American. Um, they're not voting for Tom Kim. And Thagala, I think, had a tremendous year. Not as good as Cam Young. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, would, I wouldn't disagree whatsoever. PGA Player of the Year. Mm-hmm. You want me to, do I need to go through it or do you just want to say it? Uh, I tell you, it isn't going to be. <laughs> 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 okay, so so now we're down to two. So it's not going to be Cam Smith. Uh, so it's either going to be Rory. Yeah, wouldn't that that would put the cat on? I think it's got to be Scotty Scheffler, honestly. Yeah. So um, I, I'm not arguing with you at all. Mm-hmm. At all. I guess. But at some point, I think this is going to be. I think that it might be more positive for things that we're going to see down the road because it kind of devalues winning it not not as a player because you just walked away with an extra 18 million dollars but it 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 really starts to diminish what the pga tour is labeling as like their super bowl 100 percent, yeah but um i'd I'd be surprised i mean it depends how far back people think and or the players think i think scotty Schaffer, from what i know is a pretty popular guy uh he had a phenomenal if he's ever going to win player of the year, I would say it's this year, put it that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, he had a phenomenal start to the season, but it was earlier in the season. And then Rory obviously has finished extremely strong. Yep. At that, um, if he won it, there. if Rory wins it, there may be more ballots in there than there are actual PGA Tour players. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then you're on the scale. 
<laughs> this is not a political show, by the way. This, this, this is a this is a show to go and kind of relieve your mind of all the uh, the, the bullshit that you have to put up with every day. Okay, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up kind of with this. I know we got to get you off here. Hold on, hold on. Okay, uh, it, okay. it's, this is gonna be a, this is hot. It's hot. Okay, okay. Haven't heard this before. Mm-hmm. The John, you're not a NASCAR fan, but you know what the oh. Daytona 500 is. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, several years ago, we took the players' championship and we moved it. It's it's early. It's before yeah. it's before any of the four majors, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Do you kind of? I mean, it's going to be a pain in the ass for me to get to Jacksonville every. It's easy for me to get to East Lake at Jacksonville. Yeah. It's going to take some effort, but I, yeah. I'm not against it. And and I have never heard the PG uh, the FedEx Championship labeled as the fifth or sixth major. I guess it would have to be the sixth because TPC is always labeled as the fifth. Yes. I've never I've never heard the FedEx Cup labeled as the sixth major. It, are we? And I know we've got a contract and we got some things we got to do. But would it? Would you be surprised to see the PGA Tour? start their year with the Super Bowl and then play the rest of the year out. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, meaning would they put the players championship earlier? Is that what you're saying? No, the, well, the play, the, the players championship is already early. I'm just saying, I, I don't know like, how you, how, how do it, you, how do you build more value into the FedEx championship when the the players' championship is already like leaps and bounds ahead of like what you're getting at the at the FedEx championship. Yeah, I think what you're saying is absolutely true. It's it's very hard for people to separate. Like this is the biggest event of the year, and no, this is the biggest event of the year. So how are they how are they able to separate that? So I think shortening the season definitely, and then finding some other way to tell the story. I think the the tour championship being at the end of the year makes most sense. To me, that is, it's kind of, you know, it's the Super Bowl is in the beginning of the year, but it's technically at the end of their season. So season, yeah. The end of it's the same scenario, if you will. Um, but I, but I I think that's got to be a reward for what's mm. gone throughout the year, whereas the Players Championship is a reward for the the rankings, if you will, from the previous year. So the 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 criteria to get into the Tour Championship is way harder. Than the players' championship. Gotcha. All right, Dan, close us out. Man. Well, no, I was I was only going to ask a question about player of the year, John. If you were going to re-roll uh, roll back the tape before mm-hmm. Cam Smith announced he was going to live, would that change your opinion of player of the year? No, oh, definitely, he'd win it. He'd win it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Not. Even- wow. Oof. He's won the so he's won two majors essentially. If you go by the PGA Tour's rhetoric. The players' championship is the strongest field in in golf, and he's won a, he's won an actual major at the home of golf in the 150th Open. So he might still he might still get it because enough players are going to be like truly. If you took everything else out of it, he had the best season. He played phenomenal. Uh, he won something else as well, didn't he? But he but yeah. he won. And he won. And- uh, he won in Hawaii. He won in Hawaii, so he's had three wins in the season, uh, two of which are basically one's an absolute major, the next one is the next biggest thing to a major. Yeah. So I, I think that if you truly – and he played well all year. So if you truly go by the criteria that players usually look at, it wouldn't be a much of a decision really. Wow. Mm, I like it. I like, I like it. it. Uh, John he won the championship, but it's a 30-player event. You know, yeah. so yeah, no, I, I'm I'm with you, and I, I hate I haven't heard I don't I hate to say this, but this tour championship might have an asterisk beside of it at some point. <laughs> yeah, I mean they they didn't lose anybody prior, but it certainly had a bit of a it, it was tremendous that Rory won because he was the one that really was championing what's going on, and then he went ahead and won it. So he he absolutely put his skills where his mouth was and i don't mean that he was obnoxious on what he was saying but he was the one that was kind of taking the flag and saying this is what i believe and this is what we should be doing and then he went and won, to, won the event anyway which is incredibly impressive really yeah. and the form yeah. of the fashion in which he won it you know like he yeah. was no. what did he start at? he started four under he was back to even par yeah two right. holes 
So they played 70 balls, 20 under par or something like that, or 24 under, 25 under. Yeah, I, I, well, I've got a mixed review on that one because I think, um, I, yes, he did win it, but I think Scotty also lost it. Oh, for Sche- sure. He, yeah, Scheffler. I mean, you, you're starting that far ahead, and that's and and you're you're the caliber of player that you are. Uh, it, it, everybody has bad events and days and what have you, right? But he that that was like he should have been. Yeah, he should have been uh, potentially even double digits away from those folks. So. Yeah, no, he and he played well Sunday morning because they had a delay, so he finished up. That's Sunday. right. Right. So before he teed off, I, I, I think I said to somebody like, "Well, this is great playing. You can take care of business." Because I think he had a a five at least, if not a six shot lead. Yeah. At some point over Rory, um, Xander Shoffley could have been closer, but I think that that was the. That way, well, must not have been because he played with Rory in the final round. So, you know, if they were either Shoffley and Rory were either tied or Rory was ahead because first in, last out. So, Rory got put out with, um, uh, you know, Scotty in the final round. That's the right. way he drives the ball is intimidating. And if you're hitting it a bit shitty and now you're playing with a guy absolutely putting on a stripe show, that counts. That That's, that's kind of reminding you that you're hitting it shitty when somebody's absolutely puring it. Yeah. All right. I'm getting you out of here on this one. Uh, and th- you, then you can tell us, th- give me the answer. And mm-hmm. then, and then you, uh, where can we find John Tattersall? Mm-hmm. Early lean for, uh, for Augusta. Oh, wow. I yeah. know it's Kirk. Cur- I said no curveballs. I, I always, <laughs> I always lie about that at some point. So here's a caveat. Who's in the field? That's a caveat. That's a caveat for sure. What 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 about this? I mean, it's free game right now. Let's say everybody that you think would get an invitation, regardless of their uh, PGA Tour status. Yeah. Um, If Cam Smith can get his head together and overcome whatever you know, whatever kind of noise he has to deal with between now and then, Hmm. you you can't really hide the pins from him too much if he's putting as well as he is. Putting as well as you do, like that, like I wish I would have done at some point in my limited. Um, you don't have to be overly aggressive to on your approach shots. Uh, so Augusta is a is a course where it, it's very much on the edge. They put pins in places. Literally, it's phenomenal, or it could run off and be crap. So if you can, a lot like St Andrews, you can play more strategically to safer places, and then you're putting as well as he was. Definitely could be could be look at. Um, the one that everybody's going to talk about and whether he can drown it out is Rory, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, to close out his Grand Slam, which obviously, who wouldn't want to do that? And it's Augusta lifetime invitation. Um, he's definitely going to have his chin stuck out still on this whole PJ Tour live thing by then. Hopefully he's got energy for that. But, um, but if he drives it the way he has been driving it, that's like a couple of shots advantage on that golf course because it's not overly tight and a distance is a definite advantage um so those are two i would i would look at right now well they said they were backing up 13 down there did just uh eventually they're going to run into like uh what interstate 20 and it's like well we can't go any far <laughs> we're gonna have to drive it over the interstate go on the opposite <laughs> I, I, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah i'm with you but yeah it's <laughs> like uh how much longer can you make that so yeah and it's it, It'd be interesting because a lot of them are having to hit three wood off that tee anyway now um, because of the way it runs out so that you can't, not many can fly over the trees on the left. And you run, for them, they run into the trees that, through the fairway. So they may be hitting driver now to where they were hitting last year anyway. Um, and the par fives, they're, they're so good. They're so good with their wedges that, um, you know, I, I don't expect the, change, the score to change much on that hole. The really hard holes there are, are like, you know, five's a tough hole that people don't really think about much. One is one of the hardest holes. Like, you know, they talk about 13, but yeah. one is an incredibly hard hole. If you look at the scoring average on that, it's way higher proportionally to par. Five's ridiculously hard. Seven is is a bit of a silly hole, if you can say that. It's 465, and it, it's about as wide as, uh, you know, my yard out here. It's great. <laughs> uh, hey, uh we're gonna. I'm gonna ask you to tell everybody where they can find you at. But before mm-hmm. we do that, we're getting into the winter months. People are going to be moving, or out of the summer months. Sorry, into the winter months. They're going to be moving away from shorts, and they're going to have to start wearing long pants. Yeah. Are you? Are you? Are you adopting joggers yet? 
Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I have a great arrangement with Foot Joy, and um, I don't think they have joggers, but I'm such a you know what that if they sent them to me, I'm sure I'd wear <laughs> <laughs> John Tattersall, where can people find you? How do they get in touch with you, sir? Uh, the easiest thing is Tattersall Golf. I've got all my contact information on there. It's a website. And then on the uh, internet uh, or Instagram, Tattersall Golf. And interesting dabble in that world, trying to put more information out to help people. And um, our, our world has changed a lot, like all technology has. But getting, like, literally this past week, I talked to somebody in Panama I help and somebody in India, which is a nine-hour time difference. Just because, like, I moved to the States so many years ago because I thought, okay, I need to come here to get the best information, the wonderful thing now information we can get everywhere and uh, all of us coaches are doing a better job of getting information out there so we we tend to worry about the you know ricky fowler broke up with john tillery terrible for john tillery how many golfers can we help around the world is more important i think absolutely yeah, yeah. awesome awesome john thanks for joining the show buddy we appreciate it and uh cheers, Boys. cheers.